Hello, hello, here is the video going over our quiz review for sections 2.1 to 2.2. So the first question is asking to determine if the relation is a function. So we have a graph, a table, and a mapping, and explain how you know. Anytime we are looking at graphs, there is a test to determine whether or not the graph represents a function, and that test is called a vertical line test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw vertical lines all throughout my graph. And what I'm checking to see is I am checking to see that my vertical lines only cross the graph in one spot. So my first vertical line crosses right there. That one's at one point. All four of my vertical lines are crossing my graph in one spot. So this is a function. And it does say to explain how you know. So I would say that it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Now for number two, for the table, what I am looking for is I am looking at my inputs. Your inputs are your x's and your outputs are your y's. So what I am trying to see is I am trying to see that each input has only one output. So my first input of negative 2 has the output of 1. But if I continue to look at my table, I have another input of negative 2, and that input has an output of 5. So really, my input of negative 2 has two outputs. I have 1 at 1 and 1 at 5. Same thing for my negative 1s. My negative 1s both have two outputs. So my input of negative 1 has an output of 2 as well as an output of 4. So this table does not represent a function, and that is because my inputs of negative 2 and negative 1 have two outputs. Okay, number three is a mapping. So again, I'm looking at inputs and outputs. My first bubble is represents the inputs, and my outputs are in the second oval. And if I look at each one of my inputs, 7 goes to 9, 12 goes to 5, negative 3 goes to 5, and 0 goes to negative 13. Each one of these inputs is only going to one value for my output. So this represents a function. And again, that is because each input has only one output. Okay, the next part of our review is looking at our six major functions, and we want to draw an example of each type of graph. So your exponential function kind of looks like a curvy backwards L. So it's going to grow rapidly as you move to the right. Square root function typically starts at the origin and heads to the right like a sideways curve. Your cubic function looks like somebody doing the disco with one arm up and the other arm down. Absolute value is a V-shaped graph. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a V. Linear functions, those are just straight lines. And the quadratic function is a U-shaped graph. So you do need to remember what the different functions look like. Your exponential function looks like a backwards L. Square root function looks like a sideways curve. Cubic function looks like someone doing the disco. Absolute value is a V. Linear is a straight line. And quadratic is a U-shaped graph. For number five, I am given the values of the domain, and I want to find the corresponding, corresponding range values of the function. So domain represents your x's. They also represent your inputs. So the word domain coincides with x values as well as inputs. 
So in order to find my range, your range coincides with your Y values or your outputs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate my function for each one of my domain values. So I'm going to find f of negative 4, f of 0, f of 1, and f of 6. And what that entails is taking each one of those values and plugging it in for x. So my first one, I have 2 times negative 4 minus 7. That gives me negative 8 minus 7, which is negative 15. I'm going to plug in 0. So 2 times 0 minus 7. 2 times 0 is 0 minus 7. And that gives me negative 7. I'm going to plug in 1. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 7 is negative 5, and finally I am going to plug in 6. So I have 2 times 6, which is 12, minus 7 is a positive 5. And since my domain was listed as a set, I am going to do the same thing for my range. So sets have your braces. I'm just going to write it in numerical order, so negative 15, negative 7, negative 5, and positive 5. So again, for this particular problem, I'm just taking each one of those values for the domain and plugging it in for x. The outputs are going to represent your values of the range. These problems, I have three different functions lifted, lifted, not lifted, listed at the top. I have f of x equals negative 4x plus 2, g of x is negative 3x squared plus 10, and h of x is absolute value of x plus 3. So if I look at number 6, it says f of 9. So f of 9 means that I am going to take 9, so whatever is in my parentheses, that represents your outputs, or sorry, that represents your inputs, and it also represents what you are plugging in for x. So when I'm trying to find f of 9, I am going to take 9 and plug it into my f function, which is negative 4x plus 2. So I have negative 4 times 9 plus 2, and then I can go ahead and evaluate that. So negative 4 times 9 is negative 36, plus 2 is negative 34. So f of 9 is going to be negative 34. For number 7, I have h of negative 2. h of negative 2 means I'm going to plug into my h function, and my input is negative 2. So I'm going to plug it in over here where I see an x. So I have absolute value of negative 2 plus 3. For absolute value functions, I'm always going to simplify what is inside my absolute value first. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. And then absolute value of 1 is just 1. So h of negative 2 is going to be a positive 1. Number 8 is g of negative 3. So I'm going to look for my g function, which is right in the middle. My input is negative 3, so wherever I see an x in my g function, I'm going to replace it with a negative 3. So I have negative 3 times x squared, but instead of x squared, I'm going to put negative 3 plus 10. And then order of operations tells me that I need to do this exponent first before I can do any sort of uh, multiplication. So do not forget about PEMDAS as you are simplifying these expressions. So negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9. And then finally, I'm going to multiply negative 3 times 9, which gives me negative 27 plus 10. And negative 27 plus 10 is negative 17. So that means g of negative 3 is going to give you negative 17. 
So essentially, anytime you have those numbers in the parentheses, you are just plugging it in for x and working through that simplification process. Now, if I look at number 9, I don't actually have a number in the parentheses. I have an x, but I do have what it equals. So that means I actually have the output, and this time I want to find the input. So in order to do that, I'm looking at my f function. Here it is. And I am going to set that negative 4x plus 2 equal to 10. So since I have my output of 10, I can set up an equation to be able to solve for the input. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. That gives me negative 4x equals 8. Divide by negative 4 and I get x equals negative 2. So again, this one I didn't plug in 10 for x because I did not actually have the input. I had the output. So this one I was finding x. So hopefully you can kind of see the difference between what this question is asking for number 9 versus what the question for number 10 is asking. Number 10, I have the input of 7, so I'm going to take that and plug it into the g function, which is right here in the middle. So I have negative 3 times 7 squared plus 10. Again, order of operations tells me I need to do the square first, so that's going to leave us with negative 3 times 49 plus 10. Negative 3 times 49 is going to give me negative 147 plus 10. And then that gives me the final answer of negative 137. Okay. The last two questions on the review have you identifying the type of function, filling out a table, and then using the information from the table to build your graph. So here is my function. I have f of x equals 1 third times x minus 4. Now before I can do anything, I can actually just look at the way that the function is written and I can determine the type of the function. So what's happening with this particular function is I have an x and it is being multiplied by a number and we're subtracting a number. So anytime you're just manipulating a regular x um, by multiplying numbers, adding and subtracting numbers, that is going to give you a linear function. And you'll see once we do graph all of our points, you'll see that it does form a straight line. Now I have my table, so I have my x's, and then I need to find my y values, which also represent f of x. So just like with all the previous problems, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my x and I am going to plug it into my function. Now, don't let the fraction freak you out. One third times anything is the same thing as dividing by three. So negative six divided by three is negative two. Minus four is going to give me negative six. And I'm gonna to continue to do the same exact thing for all of my other values. Again, I'm taking those x's and plugging it into my function, which I circled in green. So 1 third of negative 3 is negative 1. Minus 4 is negative 5. And you're more than welcome to use a calculator as well um, if you are freaked out by all those fractions. Okay. So this one, I have 1 third times 0 minus 4. That gives me 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. Going to continue to fill out my table. Uh-oh. Sorry. Got a little distracted on my iPad, pushing the wrong buttons. Um, and then continuing, I have 1 third. Why isn't this writing? There we go. One third times three minus four. Let me erase all this extra stuff. Again, one third is the same thing as dividing by three. So three divided by three is one. 
minus 4, which is negative 3. And the last but not least, 1 third of 6 minus 4. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. Minus 4 is negative 2. Okay, so now I am going to take all of these points and graph them. So I have negative 6, 6. So that means I'm going to move to the left 6 and down 6. So 6, 6. Here's my first point. Negative 3, negative 5. So I'm going to move to the left 3, down 5. Negative, or 0, negative 1. Why did I write negative 1? That should be negative 4. Sorry, guys. There we go. So 0, negative 4. 3, 3. So I'm moving to the right 3 and down 3. I wonder how many of you are watching the video and were like, ah, she's writing the wrong number in the table. Luckily, I realized it as I was graphing. Found my mistake. Um, 6, negative 2, and you can see that these five dots are going to form a nice straight line on the graph, making it a linear function. Okay, last problem, number 12. I have f of x equals the square root of x plus 3. Even as I read that out loud, I said the word square root. So that means my function is a square root function. Now, just like with the previous problem, I am going to take all of these x's and I am going to plug them in. So I have square root of negative 4 plus 3, square root negative 3 plus 3, square root negative 2 plus 3, square root 1 plus 3, and finally the square root of 6 plus 3. And let's figure out what, we, what each one of these values are. Okay, so I'm going to simplify what's inside my square root first. This gives me the square root of negative 1. For my next one, I have the square root of 0. Next one, I have the square root of 1, since negative 2 plus 3 is 1. For the next one, 1 plus 3 is 4. So square root of 4, 6 plus 3 is 9, so square root of 9. Now, the square root of negative 1 does not actually exist. So this particular value is not really going to give us anything to graph. So when we do plot the points, we're not going to plot a point when x is negative 4 because it does not exist. Square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. And finally, square root of 9 is 3. So I can go ahead and plot these four points. So negative 3, 0 means I'm moving to the left 3 units. And I'm not moving up or down at all. So there's my first point. My next point is at negative 2, 1. So I'm going to go to the left 2 units, up 1. 1, 2, so I'm going to go to the right 1 and up 2. 6, 3, so I'm going to go to the right 6 and up 3. And then I can connect these four points to get my sideways curve, which represents the square root function. All right, so that concludes this video on your review for your 2.1 to 2.2 quiz. Good luck on your quiz.